uh, I'll just jump into the talk. Um, my name is Farma. I'm a security engineer at University of Delaware, and today I'm going to talk about one other uh, profiling technique uh, for fingerprinting the devices, which is based on the DHCP protocol. So what is KYD? KYD is the short form, for, uh, short form for Know Your Devices. It is, based on the, uh, it is based on the fingerprinting of the DHCP protocol, specifically the discover message that is sent by the DHCP client in the four-way handshake. Uh, all it does is it takes the parameter list option. Uh, that is one of the options that is presented in the DHCP offer request from the client. And it creates the hashes based on that option. And uh, it looks up that um, fingerprint into, into one of the flat files of the database and then finds out what type of client or what type of device is connecting to the network. Uh, and this functionality is specifically based on the ability of the NSM or your network security monitoring system to look for the DHCP logs in your network. So um, just a pictorial view of how it is going to work. Uh, there are a lot of institutions that have BYOD policy, which is bring your own device. So if you have a lot of devices that are, co that are configured to get the parameters from the DHCP servers on your network, uh, it's, going, it's going to generate a lot of traffic. And if you have positioned your IDS system or NSM system in a way that it actually sniffs that traffic, then you can actually get that traffic sniffed and then um, look, that up, uh, look, look up those fingerprints in a database and then actually can create an inventory of the unconstrained, unconstrained endpoint systems. <clears throat> motivation, uh, it has been, uh, so I have also uh, worked on, worked a lot on fingerprinting the devices, especially unconstrained devices, because a lot of organizations like universities and um, startups, they don't control their devices. Like, we don't tell our users what to install and what not to install. So if I'm, an, if I'm doing an incident response on a device and uh, I don't know what device uh, it is, what operating system it is running, then it is very crucial uh, to evaluate whether it was a true positive or false positive based on no information. So um, if we actually, so this is based on the passive scanning or pass passive detection, so you cannot actually actively scan your network all the time because uh, we have students uh, and every, every, every semester we have new batch of students coming with new devices and then leaving uh, Every year we have graduation, so you cannot actually keep up with all the devices that connect to your network, and especially unconstrained devices which you do not, which you do not control. So it's important to know that um, at, at the incident uh, handling point of view, that if you have more information about a device, you can easily deduce whether it's a true positive or false, false positive alert you're working on. For example, we get a lot of times the alerts for Mac OS or Mac devices that install Windows malware. Uh, we see that download going on on the network, but they really don't run it because that Windows malware would not work on that Mac device. So prelim preliminary analysis on just based on what operating system the device is running can actually give you a lot of uh, insights when you're, when you're doing incident responding. So that was kind of like the motivation behind doing the passive detection of the devices. So um, DHCP fingerprinting is not a new concept. It has been around for a while, almost seven to eight years. Because when I was researching more techniques of doing fingerprinting of the devices, that was one of the techniques that popped up. And I think in 2012 or, th 12 or 13, somebody actually gave a talk uh, based on uh, what DHCP fingerprinting theory is. But I couldn't find a practical implementation that I can implement on my network to get the device information. So um, just a quick background for people who don't know how DHCP, finger DHCP fingerprinting works. Uh, this is the four-way handshake of the DHCP uh, protocol. So the fingerprinting is based on the discover or the request messages from the client because those are the messages that has a lot of options. And specifically, we are looking at the option 55, which is parameter request list. Uh, that option uh, has a lot of um, parameter list fields that are very uniquely ordered based on the, client, based of the, based on the type of client. So we will be looking over uh, the, either the discovery or the request message because that parameter uh, request list fields do not change based on the, based on the client uh, discover or request messages. So um, expanding that option 55, which is parameter request list, you can see that there are a whole lot of options uh, that are queried by the client. So it varies. It varies from the client. And even the, um, uh, even the uh, order also varies uh, based on what type of client device is uh, requesting the DHCP parameters from the DHCP server. So uh, in that, uh, in that uh, block, I have, showed the, I have showed the sequence of all the options that are actually queried by the client. Um, and FingerBank is, um, is, is an, I would not say open source tool, but they are available online. 
And they used to ho uh, host a database, a, a, a flat file database, a couple of years ago that would have entries like that for the DHCP fingerprints, and they would give a description of what the device would be and with a, with a confidence score. Um, recently, they have taken that out uh, of the GitHub account, and they have actually built up their own API for accessing that data. So it's not available anymore on the GitHub. But just, qu just looking quickly, uh, that fingerprint in that database gives you some information about the device that, okay, that client must be a Cis uh, might be a Cisco web device with a confidence score of 50 50%. Implementation. So coming to the point of implementation, I knew the theory that, and I knew that, okay, it's, it's parameter um, request list option that, that we can find in discover message, but how I can implement that on my network. So we are a Zeek shop. We run Zeek uh, internally as well as externally. And uh, we run, so we wrote a plugin uh, called KYD plugin that is right now available uh, and can work on Zeek 3.0, and it is backward compatible as well. So it is a very simple, basic uh, pseudo logic in these three blocks. All it does is um, there is an event called DHCP message that gets triggered every time Zeek sees a DHCP message in the uh, network traffic. DHCP protocol analyzer has been rewritten for Zeek 3.0. So previously, it used to be um, four different event types for the, for the four different type of uh, packets, but now it has all of, all of it has been combined to uh, combined in DHCP message event. So for every every time Zeek sees either of the packets, that event is triggered. And whenever that event event is triggered, you can handle that in your own script. So we have written so we, we have written a very simple script where actually we are looking for the DHCP message uh, event triggering. We handle that event and we just look for the uh, message option type DHCP DHCP discover request. And whenever there is a DHCP DHCP discover request uh, discovered in the network, all we are doing is we are capturing the parameter list option from the list of options that has been captured by Zeek. We do a, we do a hash, and then we, we match that hash in the DHCP db.txt file. If the, if the match is found, we actually log it in a separate log file, dhcpfp.log, which, which gets generated in the normal uh, log folder of Zeek. And even if the match doesn't even if the match is not found in the database, we log it as unknown. So here's the quick look of the DHCP DB um, text file. So this is available on GitHub. So a couple of years ago, when, um, when Fingerbank had that flat file available on GitHub, I actually made a copy of that. And I just made a copy, and I didn't know what to do with it. But it was still, um, it was still on my, um, sitting on my system. So what I did, I actually captured all the DHCP um, fingerprints that I had uh, with the device information and score, and I hashed all the DHCP fingerprints and created the hash version of the exact same database. So it's a tab separated file uh, with the hash, with the fingerprint, type of device, and the score, um, confidence score. So this is a screenshot which is kind of like non-readable, but I will have a better version of the same screenshot. So this is a additional log file that Zeek generates if you have the KYD plugin installed in Zeek. Uh, the name of the file is dhcpfp.log, and it has all the information, the timestamp, the connection unique, unique connection ID, the source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, the type of device uh, Zeek has uh, compared when the type of device uh, found in the dhcpdb.txt file, corresponding hash, and the corresponding fingerprint in the last column. So this is a little better view. Uh, I have just grabbed four important, four, one, two, three, four, yeah, four or five important fields out of that log file. So the first one is the client IP. This is all production data, so that's why I had to deduct the um, client IP addresses. Uh, the, the device type, the hash, and the, uh, you can see the DHCP fingerprint right there. So uh, for, the, for the people who don't run Zeek, uh, how they can implement that if they really want to get the you know, if, you, if they really want to get the hash and the fingerprint. Uh, there is another um, Python script in the same package called kyd.python. Uh, it runs, uh, it requires the deep packet uh, package of Python, so you have to install the deep packet, which is available via pip install, and you just run that Python script on the, on the pcap file that you have, and if that pcap file contains the DHCP uh, messages, then especially DHCP discover or request from the client, all it will do is um, that script will print out in JSON format the fingerprints of those packets. 
So this is kind of like a sample output of that PCAP file, which will show you the DHCP fingerprint, the hash, source IP, source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and the timestamp. So talking about the unknown hashes, so again, uh, if, you, if we have the Zeek KYD package installed, I have grabbed through the unknown hashes in the, uh, in the DHCP, DB, uh, DHCP FP.log file, and they, these are the hashes that are not, find, that are not found currently in the DHCP, DHCP DB.txt file. So what I, have did, uh, what I have done is integration with the finger bank. So as I said before, that they have taken out the database from the GitHub, but now they have a website where you can actually create an account, uh, log in with your, uh, and if you have a GitHub account, you don't even have to create an account. You can actually log into their website using your GitHub credentials, and it will generate an API key. It will generate an API key that is unique to your account, and then you can use that API key, API key to freely um, query the database. So you don't even have to pay for that service. So what? Uh, so so there is another script, dhcpunknown.py file, which is the dhcpunknown.py um, script, which is available in the KYD package. All it needs is uh, your key for the account, uh, the unknown hash file. That hash file should be a tab tab separated hash file, which uh, with the hashes and the fingerprints that you want to query that you want to query on the finger bank's um, website. And if you, have, if you are running uh, behind the proxy, then it can take the proxy options as well. So this script will be um, querying those two uh, unknown hashes against the finger, bank, finger bank's API and will be producing output in a file. So it will produce a tab separated file, which is called DHCP FBQ, as well as it will spit out on the it will spit out all the entries on the SED out as well. So you can see that those two unknown hashes actually belongs to the Juniper switch and Google uh, or Android OS with the confidence rate of 73 and 87%. Where to find the scripts? Uh, so it's super easy. So if you run Zeek, uh, Zeek comes with the Zeek package installer. So you can just do a ZKG install KYD, and it will automatically install the KYD package in your Z cluster, and it will automatically enable it. And all the other scripts, like the KYD.py, that runs against PCAP. The DHCPUnknown.py, that will actually um, query the finger bank for you. And the, uh, and the flat DHCPDB text file, they all are available in the Python uh, folder of the same KYD package. So everything is available online on GitHub. Contribute. Uh, so even though Finger Bank's uh, API is free to query, they have a limitation. So they have only 300 queries per hour limitation. I would not say only because that dhcpdb.txt file has more than 500 fingerprints already, and we hardly find 15 to 20 unknown hashes on our network in a week. So we just run that unknown dhcp.py file once in a week with those 15 or 20 unknown hashes. So that limit is way above. Uh, way above the quota that we would even reach for the hour. So you, you can, and as I said, that, that script, if you run that script, it will actually generate a tab separated file for all the hashes that has been queried to the database, uh, that has been queried to the finger banks database in the DHCP DB FBQ file. So if you ever run that script on the unknown hashes that are in your organization, you can actually contribute back data to the central location uh, of DHCP db.txt file that is hosted on GitHub so that other people should be able to use that and cannot uh, and should save their queries from burning on uh, on the on the finger banks api and that's all i have got thank you Hello. Okay. You said to swallow this one. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, quick one for Windows environments. Um, you can do this equally by getting the assigns in your DHCP logs. Um, also, you would go to your VPN logs if you're doing assigns there. Uh, low volume, so it won't blow up your, your license of your favorite SIM. Uh, the other thing you can do is link it to Active Directory for that IP to get the username, device name potentially your exchange logs to get potentially the, the BYOD type scenarios or the remote users logging into email um, and or your wireless solution and of course your VPN solution to map all this as well if you wanted to do it within the Windows environments. We were able to take our SecureWorks IPS, get an alert and basically uh, 
know who the user machine was before they ever called us. So oh. the same mapping could work within the Windows environment if you're interested. Thanks for mentioning that. That's a good pointer. Other questions, Could, comments? Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, <laughs>